Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Barely Bookish Podcast. Today we are continuing on with Jane Eyre. I feel like I don't even need to introduce you anymore. Probably Actually, not, but hey everybody. Probably not. I mean, if you're joining in on episode 16, that's a little weird. <laughs> Listen, it's and it's not a great place to jump in, quite frankly. No, no offense to whoever is, if you're doing that, uh, mm-hmm. reevaluate your life choices. Start at episode one, the beginning, a very good place to start. Julie Andrews mm-hmm. told us that, and she was right. Facts. One hundo. <laughs> Definitely start on episode one. Um, things are not going to make sense. Nope. There will be references that we have made that mm-hmm. maybe I I may have forgotten them at this point. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Chapter 31. Whew, um, 31. Jane just chilling at her small little cottage. Okay. Yep. That would go for $2,000 in New York City right now. If you were renting it. If, mm-hmm. you, wanted to, if you wanted to get the, buy that thing, you got to have Rochester money. Mhm. Mhm. Um so she's got 20 kids in the school. That's good. She doesn't like them though. She hates them. <laughs> I, like my fa- so my favorite part of these chapters and like mm-hmm. just this part of the book in general is just like Jane is not suited for this life. Like No. She It's the only option she feels she has, but, like, she Mm -hmm. does not like Adele to start. Sort of, like, grows on her as, you know, they spend months together. And then when she's like, I got a real job as a school teacher, not as just, like, you know, a governess. I have an actual Mm -hmm. school teacher teaching the minds and molding the youth. She's like, this is the worst thing that I've ever done. It's terrible. Yeah. These children are dumb. They don't learn, and they're boring. And it's like, Jane, they're ten. Like, what do you want from them? Literally. She's like, I don't like kids. And I'm like, why did you go into school? Well, go into teaching. we can talk about the patriarchy. And mm-hmm. just be like, what, what options did Jane legitimately have going into this? She's not, not well educated. Like, Lowood prepared her for jesus stuff mm-hmm. the nunnery the nun- <laughs> yeah she could be a nun mm-hmm. if she converted and went uh became catholic she oh yeah could... i forgot she's not catholic she's not yeah she's anglican she could be a mistress which she doesn't want to do she's not into mm-hmm. it uh not into it. school teaching hates it what other options are there yeah she could become a cat. She could become a cat, and honestly, she <laughs> might be happiest yeah, if she surely. became a cat. <laughs> it's just like that, like the, her. Even though she's got a somewhat privileged upbringing, like her options are so, so, so minimal, and and mm. that really just like slams home in moon. <laughs> she agrees. She is not on this patriarchy train um jane's like yeah this is beneath me i'm like girl you're a beggar nothing's beneath you right now correct and you're doing you're doing the you're like you've been whining and complaining about oh i just need a job i just i want to help and contribute and there's like Mm -hmm. all right teach these kids you're like ew these kids no have you ever met someone who's living paycheck to paycheck and like they're barely scraping by And you're like, why don't you just pick up a serving job on the weekends or something? And they're like, serving? No. Mm. And you're like, girl, nothing's beneath you right now. Like, you can't afford to live. The only thing that makes it so you can get to your next paycheck is your credit card. Yep, that's where Jane is. Yeah. Like, maybe I've just had to throw all of my life out the window too many times. You know? Yeah. But like... A serving job is never beneath me. I hate it, yes. Would I rather die than go back to it? Yes. However, it's always there. (laughs) And listen, we live in a capitalist hellhole. Even Mm -hmm. worse than the one Jane Eyre lives in. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Even worse than the one Jane Eyre lives in. So, 
yeah i mean the the vibes are strong but it's like you were literally just in a town begging people for food Mm -hmm. like because you were starving to death Mm -hmm. and then people were like all right we can put you up with a job and you were like "Ah, i guess i have my own home ew right i get to do whatever the fuck i want when i'm not teaching which is not that often ew (laughs) yuck (laughs) and you know the, the the problem is I know what the fundamental problem is. There's no hot employer. There is no Rochester. You're so true. There's no Rochester swanning around, being Mm -hmm. dark and handsome and mysterious and brooding. And not handsome, but you know. You know. I'm with her on that one. I'm not going to lie to you. (laughs) You know? Sometimes, just to make life a little easier, you just need a hot guy around. Yes my easiest jobs were the ones where i was like my boss is not unpleasant to look at Mm -hmm. it it just makes you being an asshole a little bit easier not easy but it's just like all right you're a jerk but you're pretty so all right whatever (sighs) yeah yeah you need you i think jane needs that she needs that vibe Mm -hmm. she needs mean but hot and she'd be fine i think even if she just had like a hot guy in the town that she was in She'd be mm. fine. Like, someone she can even just visit. Like, maybe a hot baker. Ooh. I like it. Yeah. I'm gonna go for a hot baker. A hot postage man. Or she mm. gets her mail. You know? Somewhere that she could just visit a hot guy. But, like, it seems like all she has are these weird kids that she doesn't like. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And she's like, yeah, this isn't gonna work for me. To be fair, she also has Sinjin. Who? Let me, let's be very clear, is -hmm. apparently a very attractive man. She Mm -hmm. describes him as such, just Mm -hmm. like, but he is all, and he is the worst. Mm -hmm. He's also the worst. So like, come on, Jane. Weirdly checks all of her boxes. Yes. (laughs) But we'll get to that later. We will get to that in a minute, but it's. Apparently, Sinjin not enough, and I get it. I get the reasons mm-hmm. why. Maybe there's some mm-hmm. subcon unconscious thing going on. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but mm-hmm. yeah, even it's just Jane is in Jane's in a funk. Jane is sitting in her bathrobe, eating some ice cream, being like, you know, I made a huge mistake. No girlfriends right now. None. Zero girlfriends. <laughs> like, not that Mrs. Fairfax fulfilled that role all that well, but like. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Fairfax was around. Yeah. Where are the Rivers sisters? Where are they? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Not around. No, all Jane needs is an attractive person in her presence. Yep. And she don't have it. She don't have it. So she's keeps being like, I guess this was the right choice. And I made a whole note here where I was like, why is she not written to her uncle yet that's known to be filthy rich? That is a great question. Because mm-hmm. she's already written him once, but it's probably because she's pissed that he was then like, you can't get married. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if I was down on my luck, and I knew that there was an uncle that was filthy rich and definitely wanted to adopt me at one point, the second I had pen and paper, I'd be like, hello, uncle. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, your boy, Jane. Let's talk. Hi, God. It's me. <laughs> Listen, she's working through some issues. There's guilt going on. She's feeling this piety that's been drilled into her skull since she was very mm-hmm. small and made to feel undeserving. But I I think that's maybe the thing I like most about these chapters is that Jane, not a lot is happening. It's a lot mm-hmm. of introspection. It's a lot of Jane reflecting on her life and where she is and what, where she's been. And realizing that her ideal, which is to have this, like, quaint country life where she's useful, where it's just, like, Christian piety, you know, Mm -hmm. doing the right thing. And she realizes it's not for her. Like, she realizes that this this ideal that she's been told is a lie. It doesn't make her happy. Mm -hmm. It does Mm -hmm. not fulfill her in the way that society tells her it's supposed to. And this is why I love these chapters, even though it's just, there's a lot of, 
it's light on plot it's heavy on on emotion and words and you know ponder it's ponderous that's the word i'm looking for Mm -hmm. but it's the moment where we see jane i think actually start to be like hmm this is her awakening moment of like "Mm, nope all the all this shit that's happened to me all the suffering that i went through i don't know that i needed to do that or at the very least i don't think that the results are worth it yeah and i love that i love it so much yeah like it's this book is billed as like oh jane Eyre, she's a fiercely independent woman and she goes her own way and we don't really see that until Mm -hmm. this moment like she is making decisions but they're often made because of or around the men in her life Mm -hmm. but like this is her moment where she's actually like on her own sinjin Mm -hmm. is around but he's so aloof and uncaring that she can basically make like she is at this point able and independent enough to make decisions and this is Mm -hmm. where like that billing of uh she's a fierce independent woman going her way like this is where that happens and mm-hmm. this is why, even though these are kind of mm, chapters, they're really interesting and important for where we end up. And that's why I'm just going to keep talking about them. So please stop me. Please stop me. And we, and, and we will go on. It's fine. We're going to have more to talk about pretty soon. So um, Sinjin walks in on our crying and he's like, okay, so Why? But like not really. He's kind of like, yeah, I too wanted more from life. But, oh yeah, you know. it's absolutely a. You are crying. Hmm. Interesting. Can we talk about me now? Yeah. He's like, oh, you're crying. How can I make this about myself? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent in the move. And you know what? I don't. I think Jane's already seeing it. I think she already sees it. Mm-hmm. I think she's already over it. But more yeah. on that in a minute. Yep. So Jane then describes the literal hottest girl she's ever seen in her entire life. And I'm like, you want me to believe Jane is straight right yep. now? Yeah. No. Like, mm. like <laughs> the a way full she... page of describing how hot she is. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we've seen like Jane has a sensibility about women. I think that's very clear. And that's a pretty mm-hmm. strong through line this book actually like going back to lowood and helen and then miss ingram and then oh god i'm blanking on her name miss miss reed reed yeah yeah no reed is her cousin no miss reed's right is this also miss reed i don't know where my copy of the book is wait what are you are you asking for the person that raised her? No, the per- the the person that Sinjin's got the hots for. Oh, Oliver. Oliver, that's right. I because I was thinking of Oliver Reed. Okay. Uh Yeah, and then Ms. Oliver and Jane's just like goddess, step mm-hmm. on me, please. Mm-hmm. You're just like, "Uh-huh." Okay, Jane. Yeah. Jane's just like she speaks and it's like bird song and we're like, "Uh-huh." Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just like all of the men in jane's life terrible the mm-hmm. one that's n- somewhat not terrible to her is just mm-hmm. like generally regarded as a hideous man mm-hmm. and then sinjin who's incredibly attractive but cold she's just like i don't know uh, some yeah he's hot but like yeah and then there are all these women where jane's just like whoo Jane has the quiz on her phone that's like, am I gay? Yes or no quiz. Yes. <laughs> How to know if you're gay. <laughs> a 20 question quiz. Right. From the British version of, of the Victorian British version of Cosmo. <laughs> oh, yeah, pretty much. She's just doing the newspaper version. She has to mail it in. <laughs> right. They're like, we'll <laughs> we'll collate your responses and get back to you. Yeah. Right. Make sure to provide your mailing address. It's not for the Witch Inquisitor or anything. No, not at all. Absolutely not. No, um, I mean this this is a thing I picked up on. I think when reading it, but like this reading through has really brought home to me that like Jane is not a straight character. 
No. Not in the no. least. No. Like, if, if anybody tries to read her as a straight character, I'm confused. That's it's fair. It's like when pe- people read um, Charlotte from Pride and Prejudice as straight. I'm like, are we reading the same thing? Really? Yeah. Hmm. I haven't read Pride and Prejudice in so long. Maybe I should revisit oh. that. Yeah, no, the whole, she ends up with the dude nobody likes because, like, what other choice does she have? Okay. All right. Read it and get back to me. Okay. Yeah. And and everyone listening should also read that and get back to yeah. us. Because mm-hmm. everybody says either she's asexual or lesbian, and I'm okay with either option. I mean, truly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But not straight. Not straight. Ain't no way. Every retelling pretty much makes her either asexual or a lesbian, and it brings me great joy. Hmm. All right. Um, I feel like I was going to say something else here, too, and I forgot my train of thought. It was with Jane, but I don't remember. It's all right. Jane's got a new hottie friend. That's all we need to know. Yeah, truly, truly. So, <laughs> and I forgot to write her name down for a little bit. So in my notes, it just says hot girl a lot of times. I mean, I think that's probably... How Jane talks about her. <laughs> in her brain. <laughs> in her brain. Oh, hot girl. I mean, yes, Miss Reed. Hello, or, yes, Miss Oliver. Hello. Yeah. I, her name's Rosamond Oliver. Yeah. Mm. So. Oh, Rosamund. yes, because Sinjin makes a really, like, pushing up the glasses remark about her name. Because her mm-hmm. name is Rosamond. Rosamond. Oh. Rose. Yeah. So it, well. it's, it's Latin or French, one of the two. It's not British. Really it's not British. And he makes some snarky, or not some snarky remark. He makes some, oh yes, I'm so intellectual and I understand. And her name has more meaning in my heart, which does not actually feel emotion. I swear. Mm-hmm. He said, my lady. <laughs> he did. He tipped his <laughs> fucking fedora. Uh, so, I, I, I will never get tired of my lady jokes. I just <laughs> think they're so funny all the time. There, uh, as I often remind people, it's not the beard on your neck; it's the beard on your heart. <laughs> and Sinjin has a beard on his heart, and it is mm-hmm. ill-shaven, and it is weird. Very patchy. Very patchy. Not mm-hmm. a good look, Sinjin. Mm-mm. So then we are on to. Oh, sorry. No, hot girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I forgot that note. Um, it's like, hey, Sinjin, you should come and hang out with my dad. He misses you. And he's like, no. No. <laughs> and she's like, um, okay. Like, she's putting every hint down. She's laying it on so thick. Like, mm-hmm. J- I mean, obviously Jane gets it because I think Jane is primed to get it. But, like, an absolute moron would understand what is going on and he's just like it's too painful and it's like my guy my guy you're doing this to yourself and you know what therefore you don't deserve her Mm -hmm. so there no she could do better she could do so much better so much better like he you are an asshole constantly Mm -hmm. and she still wants to talk to you wild like have you ever seen like the hottest girl in existence end up with like the most mediocre band that is like really convinced that gender roles still exist and you're like what happened here yeah what is going on listen i don't want to shit on what makes people happy you know Mm -hmm. i don't want to yuck your yum if it makes you happy go for it but at the same time i'm like Please don't settle. Know your value. All of you. Every human being. Know your value. Love yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't don't just be like, that guy is mean to me. That means he likes me. Wrong. It means Wrong. he's an asshole. I'm looking at you, Jane. Because Rochester, yep. I got my eyes on you. I know that mm-hmm. situation. So then we are on to chapter 32. Um, she's starting to finally look at the children as human beings so that's that's good that's right some of them aren't terrible good job jane glad you got there she's like some of them have a sliver of intelligence so that's nice (laughs) i'm like oh 
I also appreciate that like some of the parents are being like the farming parents are being nice to her. So she's like, uh, I guess I guess I could deal with these people. It's like if I must. Right. If they're going to invite me into the kindness of their home and feed me and, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, I All guess that. I could I guess I could tolerate them. Sure, I guess, whatever. So she started to enjoy the quiet life, but like not fully. Um, and she's like, I dream of something better. I'm like, okay, and that, Jane. And that better thing is named Mr. Rochester. Yeah, <laughs> like, literally. We know what she's dreaming about. We know. Mm-hmm. She's not yeah. over this man. She is not and over this man. She, like... I was trying to figure out what they were alluding to here because she was talking about how she was dreaming of Rochester and like woke up shaking. And I'm like, and then mm-hmm. she said she was in the throes of passion. And I'm like, yep. Yep. I know what that means in a modern day. What does that mean? To oh, you? no. Is it the same? She, she's having sex dreams about Rochester. Absolutely. Oh, 100%. yeah. Okay. All right. 100%. All right, all right. Okay. One hot no. Because that's I, what I was like. Mm. <laughs> no. And it's like certainly tied into this like she knows that he he's a man of passion. You know, he's going around mm-hmm. the continent sleeping with anybody. And she's like, why not me? Oh, right. <laughs> it's like, well, yes, Jane. Yes. That's I mean, he would have if you would have asked him. <laughs> that's right. You know, and I get, you know, there are reasons. Rochester is not a perfect human being. You shouldn't lock people in attics. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Yeah. But you can also be sexy while you're doing it. You know. <laughs> you know, enemies to lovers is. <laughs> right. It's a hell of an arc. Red, red flags. Well, red's my favorite color. You know, <laughs> <laughs> wave it. Just wave them. I want to see. Let's go. Jane's like, email, uh, emailing Rochester and like, you know, I know I said that I was like not into it, but like, if you showed up at my house, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> there's just this one weird, really hot, but kind of also really shitty person who keeps coming by, and mm-hmm. I don't know how I feel about it. Please yeah. save me. <laughs> She's like, and also my home address that I ran away from you from is one, yes! two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> but don't ever find me there, winky face. <laughs> Literally. Jane's like, and how is Rochester, by the way? Oh, you don't know who that is? Okay, never mind. Never mind. But like, if you could ask around. Totally. Yeah, do that. Do that, please. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Jane is like those people that stalks their exes on Facebook. Oh, absolutely. She's got multiple accounts. Mm. Just in case. Things Every time she banned. gets blocked. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, um, Hot Girl visits again. Yep. And Sinjin is like super into her. Um, but he's like, I'm a priest. It's a no-go. And well, it's like, not okay. it's not even that he's a priest. It's that he wants to be a missionary. Like he can get married. Yeah. He can get married. Nothing mm-hmm. is stopping him. Mm-hmm. He could have a real hot wife who's very nice. Mm-hmm. Just a very kind, lovely person. But mm-hmm. he's like, she's not good enough to go to India with me. And mm-hmm. it's like, my guy? My sir. Yeah. What? Buddy boy? What? And this is why he's the worst. Mm -hmm. He's so wrapped up in his vision of what he needs the world to be that he sees nothing going on around him. The actual happiness he might have if he wasn't a fucking asshole. Like, have you ever met a dude that's, like, really into, like, camping? (laughs) Um, (laughs) No, thankfully. I don't know. Some people that are like really into camping, they're like, I can't date because like, what if she doesn't camp? Like, all girls want to do is be pretty, smell nice, hotel, beach, no camp. And I'm like, I mean, that's not always the case, buddy. They're like, no camp, just be hot. (laughs) No camp, (laughs) only hot. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is the energy I'm getting from Sinjin. Yeah, no, it's at he absolutely is like if Sinjin had an Instagram today, he'd be following following all of the trad wife mm-hmm. accounts, you know, be like, mm-hmm. yeah, you need to be hot, but you also need to like be able to cook and do shit. 
domestic mm-hmm. shit because I'm going to need to, I'm going to need you to do that while I'm fulfilling my life's work. Mhm. And it's just like you. <laughs> Ew. Ew. No. He all he follows is like trad wife and like Andrew Tate. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Maybe some Jordan Peterson in there. Luckily, I don't know who that is. So Oh, yeah, don't 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 know who that is because vile, absolutely vile. Every day I'm grateful that I'm like just a little sheltered. I'm not I'm not going to send you things. I am going to let you live in that bubble. So she compares. I'm going to just say Rose because I'm not going to get all fancy with it. That's fair. Um, She compares Rose to Adele in intelligence. <laughs> yup. Yup. <laughs> oh. Like, okay, and girl. Clear, Adele is like six years old. Mm-hmm. it's like oh, oh she's oh. from a small farming community it's not like harvard was right there and available you know no, what i mean no it's like jane come on you you know yeah. you know the educational opportunities that are going on right now and maybe mm-hmm. she's just nice you yeah. know she's just a kind person listen all i'm saying is like this might be a controversial opinion but i don't think everybody needs to be super smart I agree. You know? I agree. Like, and, like as long as they're common sense, smart, whatever. Like not everyone needs to be able to read like fifteen hundred volumes and like discuss climates and the way the world revolves around whatever. Like not everybody needs to know. They no. can just be happy and nice and kind. I I will take nice but dumb over smart but mean every hour of every day of the week. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, if you're just here to support friends and enjoy life and, you know, I I I see literally nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I don't want every conversation with my friends to be an intelligence debate. That sounds awful. That that is the worst way to spend your life. Mm Mm-hmm. But if you find someone who wants to be kind, mm, Jane. Yeah, let it be. Just let it be. Like, whatever. You don't have to bring it up, you know? No. Whatever. Because there there's a difference between stupid and dumb, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, there is there there is stupid which I think is what you get when you actively are ignoring or trying to not know, and that's mm-hmm. harmful. But if yeah. you if you just don't know, that's not a problem. Yeah. That's I either that's A, fine. an opportunity to to educate or B, mm-hmm. an opportunity to make sure that you're not fucking people. But just yeah. go about your life. Do you need to like, understand how sharks swim and breathe? No. 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 You can like sharks. Or not like sharks, as the case may be. But you're wrong yeah. if you don't like sharks. See, like, I, I, this is how I feel. Because, like, sometimes I can just, I like things, but I don't understand the lore. Like, I like Lord of the Rings. I can't tell you the plot of that movie. Hobbit's going on a little adventure. I love it. I think that's a great movie. However, if you ask me questions about that movie, I'm just going to say second breakfast, Hobbit's on little adventure, ring into <laughs> volcano. What else do I need to know? Why do I need to tell you the six bands that I like and all of their songs? I don't need to. I can just tell you, hey, I listened to it once and I enjoyed it. Listen, because life is a competition. And mm-hmm. if you don't know the things that I know, I'm better than you. I'm just going to start answering when people are like, oh, you're wearing a band shirt? Name six of their songs. I'm like, it's a band? <laughs> That's what I'm going to start doing. Oh, I just like the That's shirt. That's my new po- That's oh, a good I just one. Like, found this somewhere. Yeah. I think it's my dad's. Second option. That's a good one. Yeah. It's, it's my uncle's. He's in jail, so I got his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually my boyfriend's shirt. Oh. I don't know. I didn't know it was a band. I just it's comfy. Anyways. Def Leopard? What that? I don't know. I thought it was like an awareness campaign. Yeah, I thought it was for cats. Yeah, that are yeah. deaf. And people are putting sugar on them. I don't know why. They need to stop. It's crazy. Anyways, you have a good day now. Bye. <laughs> yes. That conversation, fine. Totally fine. Mm-hmm.
Okay. The I'm browning? Good. I thought it was a cooking competition. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Michael Bublé? Uh, I thought it was champagne. Yeah. Bubbly? Bubbly? Michael Bubbly? Yeah, I thought he was just yeah. a nice, like, seltzer salesman. Isn't that just a drink? I don't know. A day to remember? I just thought it was a good slogan. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it on a day to remember. Vampire weekend? Yeah, I just, you know, it was I a like cosplay vampires. weekend. Next, I also want a werewolf weekend one, but I can't find it. I just really like vampires, and I think they should have a little party weekend. What's Listen, wrong with that? As a little treat, they deserve it. <laughs> I just, I don't know why it's so crazy about that. We bought the bread with butter? Yeah. I like butter. I like it. I like butter, okay? Leave me alone. What's so weird about that? I know the rest of their songs are in German. It's just, you know. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I don't know. Let me just get like the trans. Do you know we butter the rose butter? Mm mm. No. Okay. They're a German, like, death metal band that's just like when you translate them to English, like, one of the ones that I like is like a cake recipe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a big, like, jokey hee ha, hee ha ha. But like, at some point, I feel like their old, their new stuff is like not as jokey, but their older stuff. The ones that I like originally liked when I was a kid. Very jokey. Like when you translate it to English, one of the songs are like, There was a cow in the field. He went moo. <laughs> like, <laughs> the yes. cow said, Do you want some wishes? And I said, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? But, they know their yeah. audience. That's good. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. But maybe I'll just get like an English translated shirt and it's just cake recipe. Yeah. Very niche. <laughs> if anyone actually um, understood that, you'd have a friend for life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, the reason Daniel and I started dating is because we both liked metal music. Fun fact. Oh, yeah. that's some deep lore. Yeah, deep lore. Deep cut. <laughs> I, love know- I love knowing why couples come together. That's very interesting. These are very interesting things to me. Yeah. Was it a specific was... band or the genre? Did you meet at a concert? What was it? So we met when I was a freshman in high school in JROTC. <laughs> oh. Iconically. And that is he, iconic. Yeah. He was uh, the squad leader of a squad that my friend was in. And I turned around day one and I saw him and I was like, You will be mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just kept messaging him questions until he fell in love with me. I really tested that uh, proximity <laughs> attractiveness. Mm. <laughs> that is adorable. Yeah, I I I love questions. I love asking mm-hmm. questions. That's a surefire way to get in there. Just like, just be passionate about something. Quick, mm-hmm. let's turn this into a Jane Eyre dating advice podcast. Okay. First question to ask when you meet a man: Is your ex life in the attic? Is your ex-wife in the attic? That is a great first question. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Question number two you're going to want to ask. Mm-hmm. Is the pupil that you've hired me to tutor your illegitimate daughter? Question number three. If it is your illegitimate daughter, did you murder her mother? <laughs> question four. Regardless of whether it is your illegitimate child or not, am I allowed to call this child dumb to your face? <laughs> Question five. Are you going to make me uh, combat for your love against some random stranger that's the hottest girl in town? Question six. Do you have a large costume wardrobe that you can use to disguise yourself and try and trick me into confessing my love for you? (laughs) Question seven. If I escape in the middle of the night running from you... Will you follow me or send out any notice trying to find my whereabouts? <laughs> I'm going to save my my other questions until we finish this book. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, man. <laughs> 
So Rose then calls Jane a little ugly. <laughs> Specifically, she says she's not one sixteenth as attractive as Sinjin. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I mean, like, sure, she's talking about, in Rose's eyes, the hottest guy to exist. But, like, imagine, you know, you're, like, hanging out with your friend and you're like, all right, my dream man is George Clooney. You, my boyfriend, are not nearly as attractive. You are one sixteenth as attractive as George Clooney. Like, would you not be a little insulted? <laughs> Just be like, that's so precise. That's so exact. Like, how did you come up with that particular calculation? Mm-hmm. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm curious. Yeah, just a little, a little curious about this math, but okay. I don't know if it checks out. I don't know if it checks out. Like, I need to know how you rate the rest of the male species, you know? Right. Because like, at the moment... everybody 118th? Right. Because you've got Sinjin, you've got your dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who else? Yeah. <laughs> if those are your two standards, I don't know. I don't know. My favorite thing is in Charlotte Bronte's books thus far, it's just like, no men except the love interest jane like all jane is surrounded by all the time is women like is charlotte bronte straight like she can't be right like i'm sure she had a husband but like was she so she did get married and died very shortly thereafter um iconic gay behavior absolutely i i don't know that i'm sure someone has has like done research on the sexuality Mm -hmm. of all of the bronte sisters because all of them have from what i understand having read some of them all of them have these kind of queer through lines um Mm. in a lot of their work um so i'm sure someone has looked at it but neither of the other sisters ever married Mm. one of them died very young i mean they all they all died pretty young one of them died very young and so it's a question of oh was there no opportunity or what's going on blah 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 but Mm -hmm. Based on what, based on the writing, I think that you can make a strong argument, at least for, you know, bisexuality or pansexuality. Um, but again, it, it's hard to make those arguments from lack of evidence or just from assumption. Mm-hmm. And I, I certainly haven't read enough to do that, but someone has. And get in the comments and tell us. Yeah, let us know because that's what I want. Please and thank you. So. Rose, while snooping through everything, found Jane's sketchbook. I was like, Jane, you have to draw me, which is the worst. But Jane was into it, so it's fine. Jane's like, you mean I can stare at you and your hotness for an hour? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Let's do that. Please and thank you. Jane's like, I only paint in the nudes. Um, just. (laughs) You know, Rose would be like, interesting. Okay. Yeah, sure. And that's when Jane started that's when jane broke (laughs) jane's just like hovering over her pencil it's like jane you haven't been drawing for an hour i'm thinking memorizing yeah i'm plotting (laughs) leave me alone uh so jane's dad invites her over i was like oh we all thought you would quit by now and jane's like why does everyone keep saying that because sinjin is saying that Mm because he's a fucking asshole he's the worst um and then they're like oh it's the 5th of november so obviously everyone's on holiday i'm like what holiday is on the 5th of november guy fox day are you serious yeah what is that what uh so guy fox during oh um uh, it's 17 it's 1600 17th century uh, i want to mm-hmm. say it's charles the second mm-hmm. um there is a plot among Catholics in England mm-hmm. to blow up the Houses of Parliament and assassinate oh. the king. Okay. And it's called the Gunpowder Plot. And Guy Fox was one of the ringleaders who was captured and executed. And so Guy Fox Day is basically a day where we celebrate, or they celebrate, not we, because we're not in England and... Mm. They celebrate. Is it still a holiday? Yeah. 
It was, yeah, <laughs> it was yesterday. Have you seen? Uh, you're sheltered. Have you seen V for Vendetta, the great neckbeard um, movie? No, but that's funny that it's a neckbeard movie because someone in high school, not high school, someone in my college said it was his favorite movie, and I just decided never to watch it because of that. Yeah, no, it, I mean the the graphic novel is good. Mm-hmm. The mo- the movie it became a sort of like not men's rights people, but it's a very neckbeard movie. Um, okay. But it's it's centered around this revolutionary in a fascist society who wears a guy fox mask, and that's mm-hmm. and he's V, and that's his that's his whole thing is that we have to remember the fifth of November because there's a little rhyme to it and it's all very kitschy, um, and it's about overthrowing mm-hmm. governments. But yeah, Guy Fox Day is also bonfire night. They just light big bonfires and burn effigies. It's okay. It's weird. I feel like this is how people would describe Fourth of July, though, as a non-American. Oh, it's how I describe Fourth of July. It's <laughs> fucking weird. Like, yeah. we were just, I was just having this conversation to someone recently where it's like, I don't, I can't pinpoint when exactly I went from Fourth of July is the coolest to Fourth of July is the worst. But I think mm-hmm. it had to do as soon as I was like, oh, all of these poor dogs are just being tortured. And all of these poor cats yeah. are just being tortured. And then someone was like, yeah got some vet friends who fourth of july is real hard for it's like yeah yeah just like yeah. explosions not not good not exactly. necessary yeah like i wouldn't i don't mind fireworks but like i can do without you yeah. know what i mean <laughs> like, i don't need them and like every dog that i've ever had super chill mm-hmm. with fireworks i don't know what it is but these yorkies they're just little mm-hmm. dudes who don't care they're just yeah. like the sky is exploding <sighs> okay yeah now the smoke alarm goes off and they lose their minds but See, my dog was terrified of fireworks my cat she don't care she's like like she goes to the window and watches it and i'm like you're oh, weird you are a weird cat but we knew that weird already. Cat. i know i love her for it but very strange cat but yeah so that that is the holiday they were celebrating is guy fox day when we executed hmm. some dude for trying to blow up the government well as the kids say slay slay and purr and purr (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh so um she's working on rose's miniature and sinjin shows up (laughs) and she's like hey i i love this scene so much i love this scene because jane's fucking vicious oh yeah (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) she's just like, like I'm gonna play with this boy. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's like, have you ever been around someone who knows their partner's cheating and just like, well, nope. oh, nope. And they're like, you know what? I'm gonna catch them in a lie because oh. I'm just gonna prove that I already know. So they're like, hey, where were you at last Tuesday? And the dude's like, oh, you know, at the bar with the boys. And then they send the photo. They're like, really? <laughs> so who's this then? <laughs> and it's my favorite. I mean, favorite. yeah. Jane is calling his ass out. And mm-hmm. I fully am here for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's... Oh, my other note was... I get that this dude is a priest, but God, is he preachy. A hundred percent. He... He is, he's like a charismatic, ver- charismatic, I say with quotes. Mm-hmm. It's because he's hot. He's a charismatic mm-hmm. version of Mr. Brocklehurst at the end of mm-hmm. the day. Like there are, if you were to like plot out this book, these two mm-hmm. men are like the pillars in the first third and the last third, like holding mm-hmm. this book up. And they're mm-hmm. both preachy religious shits. Mm-hmm. And then you've got Rochester in the middle being a goddamn mess. Uh, yeah. But, like, the mirroring of these two people is very interesting. And one of the, like, yeah. just as a narrative structure, it's like, I thought we were done with all of this, but here it fucking is again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It looks different. It's kind of hot. But it's still the same bullshit that we dealt with, you know, 25 chapters ago. Mm-hmm. Jane's like, I'm going to get that hot goss, which we love for her. We love it. 
Uh, and she's like, wouldn't you love a copy of this drawing when you're on your missionary business? He's like, just like staring at it. (laughs) Trembling. Quaking. Mm -hmm. He's Mm -hmm. he's like, this is the hottest human being who has ever existed. And Jane is like, oh, do you like want, want that? Is that like a thing you want? (laughs) Jane's sitting there with the scanner open. She's like, oh, (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh. Do you want me to? Uh. Jane already has her pencil hovering over the paper to start like replicating it. Yes. And uh, Jane's like, you know what? How about you just take the original? <laughs> Jane's like, you know, she has a crush on you, right? And he's like, thirty minutes you have to tell me all about it. <laughs> yes. he puts his, he puts watch his down. fucking watch down and is like, <laughs> I'm listening. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so like they talk about it for 30 minutes and he's like all right i know she has a crush on me but also she wouldn't be a good wife and mm-hmm. i would be in a way with her within the year yep and i'm like mm, sir <laughs> what <laughs> mm-hmm. so he's like it's fine though i don't have any feelings so it's not like it matters I'm like, bruh, you're, stop. You're, you're literally leaking feelings right now, sir. Literally. your tiny body can't hold them. Literally. Um, so then he spots something, quietly tears it off, and runs away. Yeah. What was that? What was that? What was that? We don't know, and we we'll don't. find out next week. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. we will. And we will see you all in the next chapter. Bye. Bye.